tutorial. What we're going to be doing today is, as I test preview this animation, is do a good uh, animation project for someone just starting out in Adobe Animate and getting to know how to make a bouncing ball animation and also do a little frame by frame animating of uh, a sun rays over here. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started in this where I will go to File New, Start a New Project here, Action Script 3, and the size dimensions as listed here will be okay. And start into this animation. So first what I'm going to need is my oval tool here to make a round circle for my ball. I'm going to hold the shift key and then click and drag to make a circle. Uh, holding the shift key keeps that circle proportional. And so now I will take my selection arrow and go ahead, select this ball here and choose my green color for this tennis ball. And I do want it to also have no outline. So if it does not already, if it did have an outline, then make it go away either by clicking on the outline and then hitting delete, or you could um, select those, this setting of no outline before you even draw your circle. Okay, so next thing I need to do is take my pencil tool and my pencil color will be white and my line weight or stroke weight will be three. And then I'll just go ahead and make a few lines to draw the lines on the tennis ball. Um, Command Z if you do not like them and you can try again. I might make these a little bit further apart this time. All right, cool. So now what I need to do is take this uh, ball that we've just created here and turn it into a graphic. So what we're going to hit is F8 on the top row of our keyboard, and we are going to convert this to a graphic, and we will call it ball, and hit OK. So now what I want to do is I'm actually going to name this layer. So double-clicking this to change the name and call it ball. Now what I'll do is start to actually use the timeline here. So what I want to do is go ahead to the 12th frame and then once I'm here at the 12th I will go ahead and hit F6 and F6 will put down a new keyframe. So now what I will do on this keyframe with it selected is move the ball down to the lower portion of the stage. And now what I'll go ahead and do is also create another new keyframe right after it with another F6, and that just creates another copy of the ball. So there's one here and one here. And the one I want here is going to be squashed. So because it's making impact with the ground, I'm going to squash it and stretch it. Not too much, but just enough. And the other thing that I want to maybe do is kind of note where the bottom edge is of this ball here. So sometimes I just touch my screen with my finger and then check uh, and keep it held there and check this and make sure that I move down that ball so that its bottom edge is lined up at the same point. So um, that should work really good. And then what I'll do now is take this frame right here and I'm going to right click on it and go down to copy frames and then I will go right past this squashed one and right click again and then hit paste frames. So now what you'll see is it goes from down to squashed and then back to pop up again. And so I'll go down to the about 25th, 24th frame over here and hit F6 again, and F6 will insert a new keyframe. And basically now the ball will go back up to its original position. So again, I could actually take this frame, right click it and go to copy frames and then go to the end and then right click again and hit paste frames. And that way I'm sure that it's right back in the original position when it jumps back up again. So um, if I were to take my red scrub bar over here, you can kind of see it's obviously choppy. So it goes down, squashes, pops back up, and then goes back up to its original position. So what I need in between here are what are called classic tweens. So I'm going to right click in between those two keyframes there and create a classic tween. And you'll notice the blue line, which means that it's now going to move the ball from one place to the other. And we need another classic tween right in between these two. And now the ball should move back up to its original position. So if I hit enter, I can preview this and write in the timeline. If I hold command and press enter, I can preview this in a new window, which is kind of nice. So we got our ball bouncing. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a new layer. And new layer button is right here in the corner of your timeline. We're going to hit that. We'll call this layer ground. 
And what I'm going to do is take the rectangle tool and go ahead and draw a rectangle. Now I'll choose my color before I draw it as a gray. And going to start outside the edge of my stage and go all the way across. Now I do have an outline of white on there, which I didn't really want, so I'm going to undo. Go ahead here and take away my outline. And then again, click and drag and go outside the edges of your stage. Let it go off the edge. It does not matter if it goes off the edge. So um, also now, as you can notice, the ball goes behind the ground, which I don't want. I actually want the ground underneath the ball. So if I take this ground layer and then just slide it down underneath the ball layer, when I preview this, hitting enter, you can see that the ball passes in front of the ground. So um, make sure that your ball does pass this line of your ground. You don't want it to just hit right on it and come back up. You want it to go past it and then go back up. Okay, so the ground is set. Let's go ahead and make another new layer. And this one we do want to be between the ball and ground layer. So we'll double click again. And this one we're gonna call shadow. And we're going to make a little shadow graphic on this first frame. So I'm just gonna make sure that we are on that first frame and take my oval tool. And oval tool, again, I'm going to click and drag. Now, oops, so I can't see it. I'm gonna hit Command Z to undo. I can't see it because it is the same color as the gray I just used. So I'm gonna to have to go for a different fill color and let's make it black. So my fill color is black. I'm clicking and dragging my mouse to make this shadow here for the ball. Now what I do wanna make sure before I go much further is that the ball really is in a good spot here for when the ball uh, connects down to the ground. So what I'm seeing now is actually that I might want to take this ball, this shadow and move it just a little bit lower. So that looks pretty good. And now what I can do is take this shadow and I need to convert it to a graphic as well. So we're hitting the F8 key on our keyboard and I'll call this shadow and hit enter. Now what we wanna do is make a few other frames for the shadow because we want it to get darker when the ball is right next to the shadow but then lighter as it pops back up. So I'm gonna click right here under my squashed frame on my shadow layer and hit F6 to make a keyframe. And then I'm gonna to go to the end and hit F6 again. So what we want is this first frame, we want it to be light, the ball is up in the air. So the way we're gonna do that is by changing its alpha level. So if we click on this graphic, we get some options over here in our sidebar. One area that we wanna go into is color effect, choose a style, and we wanna go down to alpha. So the percent we want to enter in here is 10% for the light shadow. All right, and then we'll go ahead to the next one. So this middle shadow here, again, clicking directly on the shadow, brings up these uh, effects and options on the side here. We're gonna to go to alpha again. This time I'm gonna enter in 50% here. So 50 and hit enter. And then for the last one, I am going to again, click on the shadow, click on this style here, go to alpha, and we'll put 10% back in this space, okay? So what that does is now as I go back and forth, you can see the shadow is light and then it's dark when the ball makes contact and then it gets light again when it goes back up. But it's choppy. We wanna make a classic tween to make that a gradual change. So right click in between those two points, go down to classic tween and do the same right over here, create a classic tween. So now as we look at this, if I hit enter, you can see I have that shadow nicely kind of darkening as the ball goes down to make contact and then fades lighter as the ball goes back up. Okay, so next thing that I wanna do is uh, let's play with the giving this ball a little spin because we can give it a little spin action. Um, so once you've created a classic tween, you can cause a classic tween to spin or rotate. And so if I click on the tween here, anywhere on the tween, and then go over to my sidebar over here, I can change a couple things. I can do easing which is a good way to uh, make a tween kind of go from slow to fast or fast to slow, um, and then rotating. So I will add a rotation of clockwise rotation. Um, and so now let's just press enter again. So you can see that ball makes a rotation and then it bounces straight back up. Okay, so we are looking good. So what I'll get into now is um, we're gonna add some background elements. So I am gonna add another layer, and this layer I will call hills. 
All right, and on the hills layer, I'm going to take my pencil tool and I'm going to take a green color. A darker green would probably be good. All right, so what I'm gonna do is start just underneath my ground layer and kind of go off the side of the stage and just go up a little bit. And then I'm gonna start kind of like sloping this line downwards and then go off the side and then down a little bit and go all the way off the edge of my stage. Does not matter if that line is rough, okay? That line is fine. And we are gonna change the order of these layers a little bit um, later. But next I'm gonna go up just a little bit further and then again, kind of slope a line outwards a little bit, going up again, and then coming back down to the original line there, okay? And then I'll do one last one probably, going up a little bit, and then kind of sloping down a little bit again, and maybe just making contact there, okay? Um, do make sure that your pencil is on smooth mode. If you are getting very straight lines, it's probably because your pencil is on straightened mode. So sorry if I didn't say that before, but Make sure your pencil's on smooth mode. Um, I got a little bump there, which I can try and adjust if I just take my selection tool and then see if I can pull this bump out or maybe even just click on that section of the line and hit delete and delete. And that looks a little better, a little smoother. So what I'll get into now is using my paint bucket, I'm going to choose a color and I want that color to be a lighter green in front. So I'm gonna take one of these lighter shades of green and fill this space in front. Don't worry that it goes in front of your uh, your ground for right now. We just need to, we'll, we'll need to reorder these layers in a second. Um, next color that I'm gonna fill is gonna be a little bit darker. So I wanna take one that's a little bit darker when I, than the one I just used and put that here. And then my furthest one away is gonna be a darkest one. So that one will be this dark green. Let's see if I can click in this little corner here and fill that, cool. All right, so the hills want to actually go behind the ground. So I'm gonna just click and drag that layer behind it. So now what you'll see is um, your ground is actually in front. So let's just hit enter again. And you can see we got a nice little background action kind of going on here. So um, last thing is if we do wanna change the color of the actual stage itself, if you just take your selection tool, click anywhere outside kind of the gray area outside of the edge of your stage, that should get you to your kind of just basic settings for your entire animation document. So you see your frames per second and your stage color right here. So I can change my stage color to whatever I like. And so I'll make it kind of this light blue here. And then the last thing we're going to get into adding here is a little bit of uh, animated sun going on on the side. So we're gonna touch on how to do a little bit of frame by frame action with this uh, sun. So we're going to add one more layer and we'll call it sun. Hit enter. Um, this we can keep as our bottommost layer because it is our furthest thing away. So it will be way off in the distance here. So we're going to add a, another circle. And so this circle, maybe we'll give it like a light orangey kind of outline. And then its fill color will be a yellow. And again, holding shift. I'm going to click and drag to make a sun. And I want this to be kind of small, um, smaller than the tennis ball. The tennis ball is supposed to be up close to us, so it's very big. The sun is way off in the distance, so we actually want it to be smaller than the tennis ball, although obviously it's not as big in real life. But um, so on this sun layer, we're gonna do a little, like I was saying, frame by frame animating. Um, we're gonna take our brush tool here and with our brush tool, we want to make sure that we have a fill color selected. So with your brush tool, um, it uses your fill color. Oops, so I had my sun selected there. So I'm just gonna hit Command Z to go away from that. Um, so when you click your brush tool, there we go, that's the brush options I was looking for. So make sure you don't have your sun actually selected. Um, let's make this the same orange color I kind of used for the outline of this sun. Um, let's turn the smoothing up to 100. So if you don't see 100 in this in this spot, let's go ahead and put 100 in there, hit enter. That's just gonna make your brush lines a little smoother. So what we're gonna do is a little frame by frame animating, like I said, so hit F6, and that creates a second keyframe right in this row. And then we're just gonna click and drag and make a little sun ray. And then hit F6 again, 
and then make another little sunray. F6 again, make a little sunray. So I'm kind of keeping my hand over the X, F6 key and then keeping my hand on the mouse as well. So each time I create a new, key, uh, new ray, I then just hit F6 afterwards. And then a new ray, F6. New ray, F6. New ray, F6. All right, F6. And F6, last one. F6. So what you'll see there is if we go ahead and scrub back and forth is that we have these little sun rays kind of frame by frame appearing from the sun, which is kind of cool. So let's give this a test in a new window. Command and enter. So we've got our bouncing, spinning tennis ball and our sun rays kind of flashing around our sun. Uh, last thing that might be kind of nice is to play with maybe adding some rotation to the sun as well. So if I take this last sun gra uh, drawing that we've done here, and let's convert it to a graphic again. So how do we create a graphic? We hit F8. F8 on our keyboard brings up the graphic dialog box, and we'll say OK. Now we got a sun here that is a graphic, so I can make it rotate. It has to be a graphic before it rotates. Let's go to the last frame here and enter another F6 keyframe. And then all I'm going to do is right click in between this space, create a new class between, and then uh, go over to my options here for tweening and add a clockwise rotation. So after those sun rays appear, they're also going to rotate. So they appear and then it gives a little spin. So let's view that one more time. So yeah, so there we go. We got a ball bouncing, we got the sun kind of having some fun over there. Um, we could add clouds. Let's add clouds. One last layer, promise. Clouds. So when drawing clouds, um, let's take our pencil. Let's use the color of white. Um, I like to kind of draw my clouds as kind of like a flat line along the bottom and then kind of do these poofy poofs on top. It's kind of like a Simpsons cloud is what I feel like I imagine these being in. And then uh, taking our fill bucket, changing our color to white here and going ahead and filling that in. Now maybe I'll make this cloud um, Oops, so you can see as I just click on it, it's separate from its outline, right? So sometimes that's why outlines can be a pain, as moving a shape around with its outline can be a sh uh, kind of hard to do sometimes. But if I just click on this frame, it's going to make it automatically select everything on this layer. So now that I have everything selected, I can kind of take that um, and maybe move it in front of the sun so the sun's kind of poking out from the back. Now if I want to add another one, I could just copy this. So I'm going to go Command-C and command V to add another one. And I think it just went on top of, oh, maybe not. Um, if I zoom out, not sure where that cloud went. Um, but let's try one more time. Command C, command V, there it is. So, not sure where that other one went, but this one decided to go way down here. So, I'm going to take my selection arrow and just kind of click, drag, make a box around this. Um, this cloud, like I said, I was going to make a little bit different than the other one. So I'm going to hit my transform box and I'm just going to take this part over here and flip it all the way to the other side. So it's actually now reversed and I can maybe squish it down a little bit so it's a little thinner and maybe just kind of have this going off the side of the stage in the back. Um, just kind of adds a little dimension, a little overlapping. Whenever you have overlapping objects in your scene, it kind of just adds a little more interest and makes the scene just a little more dynamic if it has things that overlap. So there we go. That's our completed animation. So hope you have some fun with it. Um, you could totally make this any kind of a ball you want. And um, yeah, get creative with your scene a little bit. So hope you have lots of luck and get creative with your own projects.